Welcome to the Anxious Love Coach Podcast, a place for creating meaningful, conscious, secure, long-term partnerships. Here, we talk relationship anxiety and creating healthy, magnetic dynamics within partnership to help you feel confident and alive within committed partnership. My name is Natalie Kennedy, and I'm your host. I'm a relationship anxiety coach and meditation teacher. I've worked with hundreds of clients battling anxiety, and after experiencing extraordinary shifts in my own healing relative to partnership, now combine my lived personal experience and professional training to help others trust themselves within relationship and in their lives. I've been to the edge and back with my now husband from relationship anxiety and come out confidently to the other side. I want to pass the tools I've learned along to you to help you trust yourself in relationships and also create magnetic, hot dynamics with your partner. I believe lots of mainstream relationship advice today can make us anxious and dissatisfied. So let's jump in and normalize challenges that modern relationships and real people go through while also giving you tools to trust yourself, drop the shame, and alchemize your messy, twisted relational truths into profound inner wisdom and aliveness. If you haven't yet, be sure to join my communities over on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Anxious Love Coach. You can also request a 30-minute relationship anxiety assessment with me depending on availability or ask me a question over on my website at www.anxiouslovecoach.com. I've also got a wonderful relationship anxiety meditation available to you as thanks for subscribing to my email list. Thanks for being here and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the ALC podcast. It's nice to have you back. It's been a little while. Welcome back. Yeah, this episode is all about how to get more comfortable with disappointment and why it's important. It's also going to be one of my messier episodes, and I have a hunch it might be a little longer, so buckle up, hope you have a long drive or a nice long walk. It'll also be very tender, I hope. And I'm sharing some things here that I really only shared with my Patreon group. Um, I'm not 100% sure why yet, but I'm just going to trust it even though I don't have solid reasons that feel perfectly aligned, but I'm going to trust that my messy reasons are good enough. For whatever reason, I didn't feel like talking about it on a platform as big as Instagram. I don't know. But uh, for some reason, the podcast feels more intimate, and I can really share my heart for a long time. And I know that those of you that listen to my podcast, I just get a sense that you care about me more. You probably do, because you spend more time with me. You spend a longer time listening to my voice. And so in a weird way, I feel like we're friends, and we're closer than on Instagram. So that's probably why. But, um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to talk at the end about both feet in, which is now open to registration, open for registration. I ran it a couple years ago, uh, back when I had a co-coach shared in this, this year, or I guess I should say next year in 2024 in January, I'll be running it again. It'll be an abridged version and I'm going to talk about it at the end. So stick around if you're interested. <sighs> All right, let's just dive in. Some years ago, I started out on a journey into my spiritual depths. And although I'd been teaching yoga for many years, my practice in spirituality was still very surface level until I got hit with really bad relationship anxiety. And I went soul searching in Austria and I found my teacher, Steffi Price, who really solidified a lot of the spiritual practices that I had. And the reason I went to Austria when I, at least what I, what I thought my reason was initially was to get clarity on my relationship with my now husband, Preston, at the time he was my boyfriend of maybe seven years. Um, but as soon as I got there, I realized that I had bigger, bigger fish to fry and that my relationship anxiety was definitely a symptom of the problem, not the actual problem. What I discovered during that soul searching three week trip took me so deep that my relationship anxiety suddenly felt insignificant in relation to the bigger lostness and grief that I truly felt. And fortunately, after I found my teacher, Steffi, and she taught me so much, and a lot of these techniques she shared with me, I share with my clients and on both feet in, these were so liberating to me, and they helped me overcome relationship anxiety, but it... (sighs) 
helped me overcome something much bigger. It helped me overcome a neurosis. It helped me overcome this persistent meaning making that I was making around everything. It helped me overcome, I don't want to say like totally fear of death, but I was less afraid of loss, less afraid of death than I was before. And my desire for you, my dear listener, is that if you are, if you listen to this podcast, my desire for you is to be able to see the spiritual calling that relationship anxiety initiates you into. And maybe it's not relationship anxiety. Maybe you have a great relationship, but you just like my voice or something. I don't know. Uh, but maybe you do have some kind of anxiety. Maybe you're starting a new business or you're going through a transition. You've got something where the stakes are high and you've got a fear of loss. My wish for you, my dear listener, is to feel into the profound spiritual calling that you are being initiated into. You can try to logic your way out of this. And I, I see the irony in this statement, but you can listen to all my podcasts. But if you don't somehow figure out how to apply it to a deeper place inside of your soul and in your heart, you will miss out. You will miss out. You, you're worried about missing out in terms of circumstances. You're worried that you're going to break up or you're worried that you're going to lose money or you're worried about your health or something like this. And those are valid things to attempt to prevent through logic and through working hard. But I also invite you to slow down at some point in your life when you have time, if you have the luxury and privilege of time, to really connect with something deeper in your heart and feel into the profound nature of moving forward and what that means you're leaving behind. So we cannot talk about life transitions without talking about loss and without talking about disappointment and expectations and all of these things. So this episode isn't about relationship anxiety. I'm just going to be straight up with you. This episode is going to be about anxiety in general and how grief often sits behind your anxiety. So grief and anxiety are intimately intertwined and if you want to be free from anxiety or fear, you need to be very comfortable with loss and metaphorically, you need to be comfortable with being naked. Um, if we, if I were to use your clothes as your metaphorical stuff that you cling to, whether it's your identity or your marriage or your religion or uh, your diet, whatever, whatever you, your, your ego <laughs> needs to hold on to in order to feel safe is the degree to which you cling to that stuff is the degree to which you're going to suffer when that stuff gets taken away. And so, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I draw from many different religions that has assisted me. I have, I, I, I love Christianity. I also love Buddhism. And one of the things that Buddhism really drills home is non-attachment and how craving and aversion are at the root of so much of your suffering. And so if you want to not be anxious, you need to be okay with not having what you want or not having what you think that you want. You need to be willing to lose things. And that doesn't mean throwing things away deliberately and torturing yourself. It's just when things inevitably end, as they always do, that you say, yes, of course, because that's how life works. Everything ends. So to be free from anxiety means to be comfortable with loss, intimately relate, intimately relating with death and endings. So anxiety, especially the heady, what if kind, what if this, what if that, what if, what if we break up? What if I lose my reputation? What if I get canceled? These are, these are thoughts that have intruded my mind many times. This type of anxiety, the heady, what if kind, it ultimately signals a fear of loss. And the ultimate fear that we have is of death. Now, that means both in the literal physical sense, as in I'm afraid of dying, but I also mean it in the metaphorical sense, in that most people fear loss in general, the metaphorical death, the endings of things that they take for granted and, and make them keep them comfortable. So it could be a fear of loss of their loved ones, which is what relationship anxiety is all about. What if we break up? What if he's not the one? 
or fear of loss of time, fear of proceeding and then regretting it, a loss of time, loss of money, uh, loss of reputation. Just as an example, today I had this random thought that if my relationship with my husband Preston were to end, so would my business because so much of my success, at least in my perception, is based on a success story about my relationship. So if my relationship were to fail, I'm like, oh, nobody would want to, no one would follow me anymore because I would be a failure. But the truth is, as long as I'm attached to that, my relationship and my business and my reputation, I'm not free because I'm bound to an idea of what my life should look like. And so if, if for whatever reason, this path were no longer aligned and something and, and I wasn't meant to be in this anymore, I would need to be willing to throw it all away in the name of what's true for me. Now, the reality doesn't seem to point to that happening right now, but if I'm terrified of that, then I might react disproportionately in fear, trying to prevent it and prove that everything in my relationship was fine, even if it wasn't. And even though my relationship is pretty overall great, um... In order to feel truly free, I need to be okay with losing my relationship, my business, my reputation. So I hope that that makes sense. It's, I, I'm not 100% sure I explained it in a beautiful way. But so long as you are, as long as you have an aversion to loss, you will not actually be happy with what you have because you're going to be so focused on preventing loss that you won't be able to enjoy the moment and enjoying it while you have it because inevitably all of this ends. So when I had that thought today of, oh my God, what if my relationship were to end? So would my business, so would my money, I would lose all my money, blah, blah, blah. In that moment, I breathed into the possibility, in fact, the likelihood of loss someday. Anxious Love Coach is not going to be here forever. I'm not going to be here forever. Um, and I needed to breathe into the possibility of loss of my business, my marriage, my identity. Again, even if the reality doesn't seem to point to that happening anytime soon, the reality is you may enjoy listening to me right now, but five years from now, I may be insignificant to you. And uh, to that, I my response is not to try to cling to you and force you to stay. It's My response is to breathe. And I'm so grateful that you're listening here right now. And if you go, you go. And thank you for however long you choose to stay. I'm so grateful for you. And I wish this attitude for you in all areas of your life to not cling and not try to force things to happen or not happen, but just to be grateful for what you have right now. To be free of anxiety truly, you need to be okay with death and endings. You need to be okay with losing it all. Um, I had a client earlier today that I was sharing this principle with, and she said to me, you know, Nat, I resonate with the, the peace that you seem to have. I want that. Ugh, and I get it. I, I know what she's talking about because I do feel, most times in my life, I feel pretty peaceful. But I know what it took to get there. And that's what I let her know. I responded with like, do you know how much I have had to lose over and over in order to learn to be grateful for what I have in the moment and not cling too hard to things and be willing to surrender to the reality that everything ends? It's just a matter of how and when. Like, I don't share all the nitty gritty details of my private life, but my God, I have experienced loss in my life. I speak to my friends and you know, everybody's experienced loss and I'm not here to have a trauma competition, but I have gone through some shit in my life. A lot of loss, things like estrangement, family members experiencing homelessness, p discussions of suicide. Like there's been a lot of difficult stuff and to cope with some of these things, divorces, like, to, to cope with some of these things, I have had to... um learn to not be attached and you know there's some people out there maybe therapists that might say this is an avoidant way of looking at things and you know you could make that argument and I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with you but my way of coping is to be okay with death in a way be okay with losing it all because I know that all of this is temporary all of it and it's scary but it's also really liberating depending on how you look at it so I didn't 
meditate my way to peace. (laughs) In some ways I did, but the reason I went within initially was to figure out how to cope with loss first and foremost. So please don't look at me as someone who's enlightened and figured it out because I haven't. I'm super fucked up. And I say that with total love towards myself because I know that uh, the parts of me that or the, the parts of my story that I'm calling fucked up are also my biggest gifts and my biggest joy and my biggest pride. And actually, if I could, I would choose this exact life, <laughs> even though it's been so painful because of what I've learned and what I'm grateful to be able to share with you. And um, I receive messages almost every day of people saying thank you for the podcast. And to me, I would go through this all over again to know that uh, you like hearing me talk about it. So it's it's all worth it. Anyway, this episode, I want to tell you a personal story, uh, the the stuff I didn't share on Instagram. And I want to reiterate one of the most common sentences that I debunk when when talking about relationship anxiety, and it's that sentence, when you know, you know. A lot of people say, when you know, you know, when you meet the right person, you'll just know. And I just want to say that that sentence is total bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. One may think they know, one may have a feeling in their body that they call confidence, but you still never know. And I know that's terrifying because, well, what do we follow then? What, what's intuition? And I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer. So build a life, open your heart, and know that loss is imminent and love anyway. (sighs) So this week, I experienced a big loss, and I want to tell you about it. Again, I didn't feel like sharing it on Instagram, but I'm happy to put it here as a gift. Um, So, yeah. So sometime in the next week or two, I was looking forward to letting you guys know that Preston and I were and have been pregnant. I have been holding this fact for a couple months. It was very hard to pretend I wasn't pregnant uh, when I was. And a lot of stuff was happening in the world. And while I cared, I, I couldn't care too much because I was very protective of my of my space and my energy. And in a week or two from now, I probably would have announced it online and been very excited. Uh, But alas, last week I had a miscarriage at 11 weeks. So a little bit of a trigger warning. I'm going to talk about miscarriage a little bit and the experience. I'm not going to share any graphic details, but I will share some things I felt during and after and some insights I had. But uh, if you don't want to hear about it, then by all means, skip ahead. I don't know how long it's going to be, maybe 10, 20 minutes. So to be fair, most many of you guys that listen to this podcast are still figuring out whether or not you want to build a life per- a life with the person that you're with. Um, so maybe this, you know, maybe you're listening and having kids might be far out in the future for you. So it's not something you totally relate to, but um, I still want to talk about, about it because miscarriage is about loss. It's about death and it's about grief. And so there's a lot of wisdom actually that I acquired And uh, as sad as I am that it happened, as disappointed as I am that it happened, there's a little small, but it's there. There's a part of me that's grateful for the experience, again, because of what I learned and how much it deepened me. And I want to share those lessons with you because it will have made my loss so much more worth it. Um, Oh, I didn't, I didn't expect that sadness to come up this much, but it's been rough. It's been hard. I want to share lessons with you about life, about death, about surrender, trust, and grief, and yes, disappointment. Um, two main things, really. Number one, the again, the sentence, when you know, you know, is total bullshit, you guys. When When I got pregnant, I felt a light inside of me. I instantly changed in the sense that so many things in my life reprioritized themselves instantly. And I became really good at setting boundaries without 
any hesitation whatsoever. I had a newfound sense of self-trust that no amount of meditation or consciousness exercise or even uh, doing like plant medicine and ayahuasca, I, I did all those things and it was amazing. And none of it changed me like getting pregnant did. Um, all of a sudden realizing what's truly important. And does that mean that like you have to get pregnant in order in order to grow up as a human? Eh, I don't know, maybe. All I'm saying is that for me personally, when I got pregnant, everything changed. And I felt for the f- maybe one of the first rare times in my life that I knew that this was a good thing and that this was going to carry to term. I knew, I heard the statistics that one in four women experience a miscarriage, but I didn't think it was going to be me. I felt I was healthy. Everything felt good. I truly, truly, my intuition said this baby is not going anywhere. I felt in my bones that this was going to stick. And I had no doubt whatsoever. I had a good feeling about this baby. Both Press and I were excited. We were planning our lives. I had that when you know, you know feeling. I had that when you know, you feel. I had that when you know, you know feeling around my baby. And um, I was wrong. That feeling did not confirm the future. It was not an, that feeling was a feeling of confidence, but it was not an accurate predictor of the future. And many people get married with that feeling, and it's not an accurate predictor of the outcome of the relationship. And I say that not to freak out the people that, uh, we're so confident that your relationship is doomed to fail. And I also say that not to reassure people that your relationship is bound to succeed if you don't have that feeling. (laughs) It's just some people have that feeling and some people don't. And regardless of whether or not you had that feeling, your relationship may or may not work out. There is no correlation or um, relationship between how you feel towards the future and how it's actually going to turn out. And that's a hard reality. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's also liberating, again, depending on how you look at it. So I thought I knew. I really did, and I, but I didn't know. I thought this was going to carry to term, and it didn't. And there's a lump in my throat as I'm sharing this. And it's, um, it's very strange because I actually haven't really been, been crying a whole lot. I've actually been quite happy and quite grateful. But now that, now that a lot of people are, are listening and And my heart pours into these episodes. The other thing I want to point out is that being, I, I, throughout the miscarriage, both when I found out that it was going to happen, because we went to get an ultrasound the day before Thanksgiving, and I found out I had a blighted ovum. And basically that means the the baby never even developed. It just, there was a gestational sac, but there was no baby. And it it was the day before Thanksgiving. We were looking forward to announcing to the bigger parts of our families that we were pregnant. But um, the day before Thanksgiving is found out this devastating news. And, uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. It's, it's messy and, and, I have my notes here, but at the same time, there's other stuff coming up that wants to be shared. So I'm kind of in between sticking to the script and also being real. Surprisingly, ever since I found out that we were going to miscarry and all the way through to the end of the miscarriage and even to now where I'm just in recovery, um, you know, we found out the day before Thanksgiving and then I miscarried last Tuesday, a week later. Throughout the entire time, I very rarely felt anxiety. And I don't know exactly why that is, but I hypothesize that it's because I was, I was willing to feel grief fully. And I want to remind you that if you want to not have anxiety, it means you need to be willing to feel the pain of loss. Because if, again, if your anxiety is around, uh, what if I lose this? Your response needs to be, I will be okay. 
so there's no resistance to loss. So being free of anxiety doesn't mean your life stops being messy. Um, It doesn't mean you're going to be happy instead of sad when you experience loss. Far from it. You will just have a willingness to engage in life as it is. You'll be willing to grieve and you'll be willing to be disappointed. And when you face loss in the way that I faced my body processing a literal death, you will say, hello, death, (laughs) and you'll breathe and welcome it in. I don't know quite how else to put it, but through your practice of loving kindness and mindfulness and soft surrender in your body, you will find this strange willingness to die. But of course you won't, (laughs) until you do. (laughs) But My knowledge of how these things work tells me that after a death, a rebirth always follows. Um, You've gone through cycles of love and loss and death and rebirth enough times to know this. And thanks to learning to die in the emotions that I thought would kill me, but didn't, I know now that life is all, or light is always on the other side. So I soften my muscles one at a time when I feel death and loss approaching me. Um, There was some time during, I had a natural miscarriage at home at at 11 weeks. Fortunately, everything went smoothly. There were no complications or anything, but uh, there, it was very, very painful. At 11 weeks, you have a mini labor uh, with contractions and everything, or at least I did. And you pass, you know, (laughs) a lot And there was, it was so new and foreign to me as an experience. And there were moments of fear. And thanks to a lot of the tools that I think I had, I I really felt like I was able to, to breathe through it and get through it and not experience a ton of fear. Um, because I knew I was just hanging out with death for the day and it, it, it was, it allowed me to have a full cathartic process. And I'm grateful that I didn't have a traumatic experience whatsoever. A lot of people have traumatic births and traumatic miscarriages. I didn't. Part of that is because I had no complications and I felt like I had full control over the entire experience and I felt very safe and supported. Um, But also the experience of it is very painful and very unpredictable. But I really went deep inside myself while this was happening. And I felt like I was spiritually, emotionally, physically baptized by the process. So these types of events, um, whether it's a breakup or a divorce or a miscarriage or a stillbirth or a loss of your business or a loss of a loved one and they die or anything that's disappointment, loss, grief, death, um, even things that are unexpected. There needs to be a degree of surrender around it, a degree of, of course-ness. Of course this happened because death happens. Um, and if you're willing to lean into it, and when I say lean in, I don't mean physically lean your body in, although it can be that, it's more of an energy or a an inner attitude to say yes to what is, yes to what's happening, whatever that may be. And um, how did I do that? Literally, there is an exercise I teach called consciousness exercise, and I did it the entire miscarriage. <laughs> so consciousness exercise is my attitude for life. It is my constant meditation practice. I don't see life and consciousness exercise as separate. So it's like quite a complicated practice and it's simple at the same time. And I teach it in both feet. And so if that's something you want, you're interested in and you know, how to cultivate this inner attitude of yes to what is, um, it's a serious practice and, and I would love to have you. So just to recap my two points, two things that I learned that I wanted to share with you is when you know, you know, that sentence is bullshit. And number two, I hope that you understand that being free from anxiety doesn't mean being free from pain. Being free from anxiety just means that you say yes to what is, no matter what that is. I've been depressed as fuck lately, you guys. I've been so sad. Um, 
it comes and goes. Some days I'm really happy. I'm st- I still have like stomach cramps and ugh, my body's still figuring out what the fuck just happened. But um, there is a there is a profound um, little rebirth that's happening inside of me, and I feel like a, a little metaphorical flower is popping through the cracks in the cement somewhere in my heart. So just me sharing this podcast is that little flower in the cement, and uh, I'm trusting that I hope some of you will be touched by this um, because this event has touched me deeply, and. Uh, it would hurt not to share, given given how it's touched me. So I, I in honor of the little spirit that didn't make it earthside, um, I hope this touches you. So uh, let's talk about how to be with disappointment. Disappointment is a part of life. Um, working with disappointment is actually quite simple. It's not easy. It can be painful. It can be challenging. But the concept intellectually is quite simple. Um, I like to work with ritual. You can do it alone or you can do it with someone. Um, Lock the door, light a candle, put on some music, lay out a rug or a yoga mat, and using your breath, your movement, and your sound, channel what is there. So if it's resistance, channel your resistance. If it's this exercise is stupid, you channel that. If um, it's anger, you channel that. Whatever's there, you say yes to whatever's there, even if it's judging yourself, even if it's shame, yes. So you give space to whatever's there. That's the basis of it. Uh, Relax into what is happening both in the external of what's happening in your life circumstance, but also what's happening in your internal. So what are you feeling? Maybe you've got multiple different feelings happening at the same time. You make the space inside of you bigger so that you can welcome all of it at the same time. Um, and allow all the other stuff that comes up. So in my case, you know, there's five stages of grief. You've got denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. I, I went through all those. Um, Give them all space. And if you can, just outside of your ritual spaces, don't waste too much energy trying to perform. Um, If you don't have the energy for it, don't smile at people or make eye contact when you're taking a walk um, if you don't want to. If you're at a family dinner and you don't have energy, this has been me the entire last couple weeks. Um, If you don't have anything to say, don't. Just lean back at the family dinner and don't add to the conversation. If you need to fake it because you don't have the capacity to tell people how you're really doing, fake it. Say, I'm fine. If that makes you feel better, it's okay. And hopefully, I don't know, that's, that's all I got. That's, that's the whole episode on, on disappointment. And this work, it's, when I say this work, I don't just mean, you know, those couple tips on working with disappointment, but really the inner attitude of yes to what is. It's not about making you happy. It's about making yourself conscious and it's about loving yourself, being okay with yourself wherever you're at. Um, Thanks to this work, um, the main two practices I teach, like I said, are consciousness exercise, but I also teach polarity work, which is really just parts work, but my teacher called it polarity work. Um, Thanks to this, I don't fuss if I'm not feeling infatuated with my husband. And in the reverse, too, if he's not infatuated with me, whatever. I go out, I have fun. Thanks to this approach, this work, this inner attitude, um, during the miscarriage, I was able to breathe through excruciating pain and alchemize it into release, relief, catharsis, grief, and like I said, even moments of gratitude. And actually, believe it or not, I had moments of pleasure, which was unexpected, So there can even be pleasure in dying. Imagine that. (laughs) If you can see it as a letting go of of relief, then there can be pleasure in it. So never in a million years would I anticipate that, that there would be a pocket of pleasure inside of a miscarriage. And yet there was. And it's thanks to me being able to be extremely present with what is and being curious and compassionate and meeting myself and being willing to pay attention and notice more of what else is there. So yeah, there's pain, there's tons of pain, but huh, look, there's a little pocket of pleasure. And that happens when you are not checking out. 
So when, when you check out, you're saying no to what is, I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. So you've got pain and you don't want to feel it. So you dissociate. And when you dissociate, you will feel less of the pain, but you'll also feel less of the joy. You'll feel less of the relief. You'll feel less of the pleasure if it's there. So slowly building your capacity to be more present with what is feeling all of it, you'll start to notice pockets of goodness in the darkness. And that's what this is really about. It's not about feeling happy. It's about being aware. So no joke. (laughs) This has been a death and a rebirth at the same time. I have been changed by pregnancy. I have been changed by the miscarriage and I wouldn't change a thing. It's very strange. So I also want to share another story. Just just, again, this is not, this is not going to be gory, but again, this is the part of the day of just how human and messy life can really be. Um, so I'm in the, you know, the miscarriage is happening. The worst of it's over. Uh, I'm on the bathroom floor in the shower. I'm working through pain and I call out to Preston who's working in the other room and he's starting a new business and he's gone through his own stress right now. And I asked him if he was willing to be with me, even though he would have to abandon a call he was on that was important to him. And lovingly he obliged and he didn't, oblige resentfully, but he didn't oblige enthusiastically either. (laughs) So he had a lot of stuff going on and and I'm sure he would have loved to have uh, gotten that done, but I needed him in that moment and he dropped everything. Um, But it was, it was stressful for him to drop everything. So while I was in the shower (laughs) having a miscarriage, um, he was on the bathroom floor silently sitting there. Um, (laughs) And I just wanted to paint that picture of that, you know, wife's having a miscarriage in the bathroom floor in the shower and Preston is on the bathroom floor, uh, leaning against the door, uh, working on his phone. Just like, (laughs) that is marriage. (laughs) So sometimes marriage can be tearful smiles at one another when we're at the mall and we just have a little love burst and realize how lucky we are to be together. That's marriage. And we can look great and be flirting and we can go to Argentine tango and have a blast. That's marriage. But marriage can also be on the bathroom floor. Um, Marriage is a special connection. And it can also be a mundane witnessing. So uh, marriage is my husband lovingly doing all the laundry after the miscarriage ordeal and throwing in all the bath mats and bath towels and uh, that I had contaminated and also accidentally throwing in my silk blouse from Germany with the bath towels and ruining my silk blouse and <laughs> and also letting me know he wasn't in a position to take me on a shopping spree because he was pouring um, funds into his new business. So that's that's what marriage is. It's messy. Now, I'm on board with all this and I'm, I'm also a little disappointed about my, my silk blouse that got ruined. But it's to me marriage is about willing to look at the mess and be be in the mess and be say yes to the mess so on the one hand in the process of my husband cleaning up after my miscarriage he ruined my silk blouse (laughs) you know on the one hand it's not very romantic to get my blouse ruined and and not have a new blouse picked out for me But this man also cleaned up after my miscarriage and is determined to be a strong provider by the time I do go into motherhood because I'm not going to want to work full time. So all that to say, we don't have to pretend that marriage is horrible, but we also don't have to romanticize it all the time. Um, It's beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. Long-term partnership is beautiful. If you look for it, you can find love wherever you look. Um, but it's very easy to misinterpret each other. So if you picked a good partner, the intention, the intentions that they have are always good. And that's important. (sighs) Okay. Well, that is all I have on, um, grieving and death and disappointment. Um, although I'm going to work some, so I have a few more messages about that in the upcoming, but I do want to talk about what's coming up. So the first one is that next week, uh, on December 9th, we're going to have our monthly Patreon call. And 
this one we have hit over 150 patrons so as promised my husband Preston will be joining us and I plan because he's joining us I plan to skip our embodiment practice and we'll just do a long a long Q&A so we have two tiers we've got the ALC fam and the ALC super fam the ALC fam is five dollars a month and uh, you don't get to attend the live monthly call but you can ask questions beforehand um, on a designated post that I make three days before and uh, the top three voted questions get answered on the live call which you can watch in retrospect uh, if you want to attend the live call for four dollars more per month nine dollars a month you can attend the live call and ask me questions live so after I've answered those top three questions um, from from the designated post I open up and basically do live coaching based on uh, based on who raises their hands first so you can ask questions to me. You can ask questions to my husband, what it's, what it's been like for him to be in partnership with me. He's also experienced his own variations of relationship anxiety. I did not know this until a few years ago, but not only did I have doubts about him, but he had doubts about me. And so we both have a lot to say about this. And if you want to get a, a man's perspective on on things, he's very, very wise and he's, I'm very grateful that he's willing to come on. So if you want to join, uh, I'll link the Patreon below again the next call is december 9th at 11 a.m pacific time and next uh both feet in is officially open Woo-hoo! and uh i actually la- launched a black friday sale uh the <laughs> three days before i was gonna miscarry <laughs> and um, when I started miscarrying, I totally detached from social media. And so this sale went on, but I didn't talk about it. And so nobody knew about the sale that I was running because I was purging my guts out, basically. So in hindsight, I wish I did not launch both feet in and run a sale right before I was about to have a really sad life-changing event. I wish I had waited, but for whatever reason... I didn't. And I guess that's how it was meant to be. I was meant to just launch this in a very messy way. Um, But in either case, I'm sorry that you didn't really hear about it unless you were on Instagram that those one or two days where I mentioned the Black Friday sale. So anyway, I've decided to extend it until December 10th. I will link both feet in on this podcast. podcast and you can use the code black friday 20 to get 20 percent off so both feet in is it's um it's one of the simplest programs i've run and we're going to be going for three months we start on january 19th and we go through may 6th there's two components to both feet in there's going to be an online course on teachable just like the previous version although both feet in the, that I'm running right now is an, going to be an abridged version. So if you were in both feet in before, uh, you likely saw that I had um, a bunch, like 12 lectures that were an hour and a half long. This will not be the case anymore. These will be short lectures, 15, 20 minutes tops. And a lot of them are going to be audio so that you can... Um, listen to it when you're on a walk or on your commute there will be some pdfs and only when it's totally necessary will there be videos so it's going to be a much shorter and snappier course and more specific to what you need so i'm very excited about that um right now on teachable there is nothing if you buy both feet in right now and you go on teachable there's nothing there that is because i will be slowly building out the course starting in january alongside with the sessions that we will be having live so there's going to be um, nine modules, and in these modules, there will be several small lectures. And that will be filling out on its own time. And alongside that, we will have three sessions per month for three months. Three sessions per month for three months. So that's a total of nine sessions, although I'm going to throw in um, an opening and closing ceremony in addition to that. And also I'm going to have an intimacy through anxiety, like kind of like a sex anxiety masterclass on top of that. So we're going to have basically 12 sessions. But the main sessions are the three that we have per month for three months. Now, two of these sessions are going to be embodiment and meditation. And most of these, I will be partnering you with others in the program in those sessions. So if you miss those 
two monthly calls for whatever reason, you're working or you're in the wrong time zone, it's no big deal because part of the program is going to be mandatory for you to have an accountability partner. I call it your BFI, BFF. You're going to need to have one and I'm going to need want you to practice um, once a week for at least a half an hour with your BFI, BFF. And that is to solidify the practices like parts work and consciousness exercise, which are partner practices. When I say partner, I don't mean your romantic partner. Ideally, your romantic partner does not know that you are in this program. If you have to tell them, great, but I would prefer that you start to experience changes silently and without making a a big deal about it in your relationship. It's just, I want slow, subtle changes for you Um, and your partner to just naturally, slowly want to know what you're doing and let them be curious about you. So that's one of my things. I actually love conscious secrecy in a relationship and I don't mean secret keeping like you did something terrible and you're not gonna and you're gonna lie about it I mean just for the sake of uh keeping the fire burning staying a little bit mysterious and not sharing everything with your partner so when you start to feel a little bit more at peace in your, with yourself and you start to trust yourself more you'll lean back in interactions a little a little bit more this is especially true for a lot of women who wish that their partners would be more curious about them you wish your partner would ask you more questions you wish your partner would be more interested in what you have to say you wish your partner would chase you more you wish your partner would buy you more gifts um, if you want to experience that you need to energetically be able to lean back in the relationship and And um, this program will teach you how to lean back into your own energy and focus on you. So anyway, long story short, um, you will have a both feet in BFF, BFI, BFF, best friend forever. And my hope for you is that after you have learned these practices, primarily consciousness exercise and polarity work, that you will have someone for life that you can call on and process things with whenever they come up. So, you know, I have a dear friend named Mary that I practice every single week. She and I meet up and we do consciousness exercise over Zoom. And it's, I look forward to it every week so much because things come up during the week. I have heartbreak, I get angry about something. And just having someone there who's going to witness me as I process these emotions very consciously without judgment, it keeps me open. It keeps me clear. If I get pissed off at my husband, I can clear it um, through consciousness exercise so that I'm not bringing that baggage back into the relationship. Um, And it's beautiful because this takes you so far beyond your relationship or marriage. You can take it into your work or if you've got troubled relationships with friendships or family members, you can clear that stuff. So your BFI, BFF is going to be your person that you practice these techniques with that you will take into your life. So we'll meet twice a month as a group um, for you to practice with other people and get a chance to meet other people um, and find people that you resonate with and feel safe doing these practices with. But you'll also I'm also going to have you find someone uh, as an accountability partner to practice with every single week so that you can get into the habit of clearing your emotional cue, your emotional gunk. And we'll have a a Discord group. I'm new to Discord, so I'm figuring it out. But we'll use it to find uh, partners to practice with and also to, you know, ask questions about the, the techniques and things like that. So the time's not established yet. We'll probably do uh, late afternoon or evening uh, Eastern time. Uh, More than likely, as the group fills out on Discord, I will ask what time is best. But the nice thing about this program is the two sessions out of the three sessions per month, because they're going to be meditation sessions and I'm going to be requiring you to do it once a week, if you miss those two sessions, it's not a big deal. If nobody shows up, that's going to be a problem. So... (laughs) So definitely come, but it's not a disaster if you can't make it. Uh, the third call per month is going to be a Q&A. So that one, again, not a huge deal if you miss it, but if you have a question, you definitely want to come. And uh, those sessions, the Q&As, I'm going to stay for up to three hours to make sure I answer everybody's questions. So some, th- if you go to the Both Feed In sales page, you'll see all of the modules and what we're going to be covering. But here's an idea of what we're going to be 
uh, including. So things like how to clear resentment, disappointment, and fear, all of these emotions that are kind of on your emotional cue based on what's happened in your life is going to influence how you see your relationship. It can it can have been caused by your current or past relationships. And the beauty is that through these practices like parts work and um, consciousness exercise, you can resolve these feelings without the person's knowledge or acknowledgement or apology. So how liberating is that? Uh, we're going to talk about how to take responsibility for yourself as a grown adult, uh, how to change your relational beliefs, how to trust yourself. Uh, we're going to be talking about communication in a way that's ethical and responsible and also <laughs> maximizes the likelihood of influencing your partner to meet your needs. And for that, we're going to be using a mix of nonviolent communication and polarity work. So there's different types of communication depending on the stage of your relationship you're in. So if you've been communicating in a really irresponsible way, we're going to learn how to communicate in a more responsible way. But if you found that you've gotten really good at that and now you sound like a robot and a therapist, uh, we're also going to be teaching you how to uh, leverage your strengths in a yin and yang way of communicating. So um, a hint, masculine versus feminine beings are driven by different things. So if you're a feminine being, you can't expect to communicate with your masculine being and have them respond to you in the way that you're expecting. So you need to understand how they are wired, how a masculine being is wired. Obviously, these are generalizations, but you can tweak it as needed. Um, if you want to kind of ethically influence your partner to behave in the way that you want them to, you need to communicate to them in their way. You can't communicate to them in your way. <laughs> this took me a long time to figure out. I'm pretty spiritual and my husband for the longest time was not very spiritual whatsoever. And even now he's still much more of a logic person. And I had to learn how to speak to him in his language if I wanted to get my needs met. I could not speak to him in spiritual woo-woo. Um, that would just fly over his head, go in one ear and out the other. I need to be very direct with him. So we're going to be talking about that, how to communicate with someone who is wired differently than you. Um, we're going to talk about seeing your partner as your mirror and your relationship as your expansive spiritual practice. Uh, this is also going to help you feel a sense of meaning whenever you're in an ebb, as opposed to an ebb being like a, you know, waxing and waning, your attraction has dipped or something like that, or you're not as connected. Um, so you can still feel a sense of meaning and peace when you're going through a tough time in your relationship, as opposed to just feeling hopeless and like you're in the wrong relationship. We're going to give you a lot of tools for that. And uh, this version of Both Feet and a Bridge is also going to have a library of tools and my favorite meditations that you can draw from anytime. So um, I'm not going to make you go through them. They're just going to be there and I'll, I'll share when and why to use these particular meditations. Um, I'm really excited about this part too. I'm, uh, there's going to be so much in here that I did not include, um, in the last version of both feet in. And if I did, it was in a really long winded way. So I'm excited to do this whole program again in a much more concise manner. And the last thing, uh, last but not least, there's still, there's going to be more in here than I've listed. Um, but these are the big ones is how to create a ritual whenever you're trigger triggered to be able to move through it. So I mentioned uh, like how to create a ritual very loosely in this podcast, but um, ritual has been a big, a big component in my healing. And I want you to have access to that because it can, it can change your life. So, so the, I want to also just be transparent with you and let you know that there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees that this will work for you. And there are no guarantees that this will work on a specific timeline. It's worth noting that when I learned this stuff in Austria, it wasn't to cure relationship anxiety. My teacher, Steffi, didn't know what relationship anxiety was. Um, I showed up to her house feeling lost. And when I learned these tools and applied them, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that my relationship anxiety went away. And I was very excited and willing to commit wholeheartedly in my relationship. But that wasn't the goal. That was, a, that was a side effect of being at peace. And in hindsight, I can see why all of this worked. Um, because these tools help you establish more congruence within yourself. You, you become more authentic. The inside matches the outside. What you feel matches what you say. What you say 
you will do matches what you actually do. Your actions and your actions and words line up. Um, these tools made things more obvious where I was out of integrity, where I'd been inauthentic, and it showed me where my fears were really coming from. And it also showed me what I needed to do with my fear, what my fear needed from me. So this is a clarifying program. I can't guarantee that if you're on the fence that this program is going to make you certain about your relationship. Uh, one of the biggest fears that people have about joining my program is that they're going to find some big, terrible truth about their relationship that they're going to find out they have to leave. Um, I wish it were that simple <laughs> because at least if it, you know, some big, terrible truth were to happen, you would, you would know what to do and you would go straight into heartbreak. But if anything, this program may give you a more beautiful kind of confusion, I just realized n n people might hear that and be like, fuck Natalie's program. But it's not, it's about being okay with uncertainty. It's so it's about being okay with not knowing. Um, if you guys look at me and think I know what I'm doing, you are mistaken. I'm just blissfully confused about all of this. <laughs> and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome to be okay with not knowing. I think it's awesome to be content with the mystery and to just be a full yes to life, not knowing how it's going to turn out. A full yes, even though you're naked and could lose it all. In fact, you will lose it all. And somehow you're okay with that and you're just grateful to be here while you're here. That's what this is about. This is the work of life. Um, you come in because you have relationship anxiety, but you come out with something much deeper. Um, this is what I wish for you. So I shared about my miscarriage today, and even though I'm selling a program that initially is about relationship anxiety, this program will help you someday if you go through a loss like a miscarriage, because the work is all the same. It's about being human, it's about feeling your emotions, it's about healing your inner child, it's about being an adult and taking full ownership for your life and saying yes to what is, and being driven by love and courage. That is what this program is about. Both Feed In is not about your relationship. It's about Both Feed In for life. Yes, I'm going to participate fully in whatever I have chosen. That's what it's about. It's not about, it's about not half-assing your life. So um, that, I hope you join. And just a couple last logistics before I wrap up. Again, if you buy both feet in right now, you're going to go on to Teachable and you're not going to see anything there. Starting in January, um, because the program's starting on January, I think, 19th. Uh, yes, we have our opening ceremony on January 19th. Um, starting in January, probably that first week is when I'm going to start adding more modules. There's an intro module there right now, just letting you know what to expect. Um, that's going to start filling out in January. So don't be alarmed if you go on Teachable and you see nothing there. That's by design. Um, but then we'll start having sessions and, and the program will, will gradually fill out. And um, yeah. Uh, again, mostly it's going to be mostly audio. It's going to be abridged, a shorter version, a lot of the same new modules. Um, if you were in both feed in last, last time, uh, you may notice that some of the modules that you did are not on this one. Like I did something on attachment styles. Uh, there will be mentions of those topics, but there won't be like whole lectures on those things. And the modules will be much shorter. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to keep the Discord, so just keep an eye out. I'm still thinking about that. And um, if you go to the Both Feed In Sales page, you may notice like under the testimonials that um, there's someone named Sheridan in the testimonials. That's because I used to have a co-coach. We ran... The, the, both feed in w was this like six month long program and we had a lot of different sessions per month and she led some of them and I led some of them. So, um, if you're wondering who's Sheridan, uh, it's, we ran the program together back when, back when she was still part of anxious love coach. So you may see her name in my testimonials. I just wanted to, to share that. Now, uh, if you want to join now is the time, uh, again, I am running an extension on the black Friday sale until Sunday night. December 10th at 1159 Pacific time. So use the code black Friday 20 to get 20% off. So that is that black Friday 20. I'll link the, uh, 
both feed and page below. There is a payment plan option, so you can pay in full for a discount, or you can break it up actually into four payments, which is really cool. So that's all. And as always, if you have any personal one-on-one -on -one questions for me, feel free to submit a Wizio. I will make a personal, customized a video response to any question of your choice, whether that's a personal question or something you're going through in your life where you need guidance, especially in your relationship. I'd love doing them. Uh, if you are not sure, just go to wizio.com slash anxious love coach and look at all the reviews. It's a very loved service and yeah, it's always there for you anytime. So that's all. I hope to see you in both feed in. If you have any questions about it, shoot me an email or a DM on Instagram and it is midnight now. So I am going to get ready for bed. I have clients in the morning. Thank you for listening to me share my inspiration and my heartbreak with you and for seeing me. <sighs> Thank you for seeing me. I'm so grateful for you. I know I say it all the time, but hopefully you never get tired of hearing it. You're not just a listener to me. You're, I feel connected to you. I'm like, channeling my love into this microphone which is going through a wire into my computer and it's going to be processed and Preston's going to edit with it with his love and then there's going to be stuff added like a beginning and an ending and then it's going to go into your ears from your phone and I hope you can feel my love and my gratitude again I don't know how long you'll be in my world so while you're here I'm grateful for you thank you and I wish you a blessed rest of your whatever. <laughs>Thanks so much for listening to the Anxious Love Coach today. If you loved this episode, please hit that subscribe button, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and maybe share it with someone that you believe might benefit from these perspectives. Please also subscribe to my email list at www.anxiouslovecoach.com as I'm trying to reduce my reliance on social media. In exchange, you will receive my free relationship anxiety meditation and more supportive tools sent your way. If you would like to work with me, head on over to my website at, again, anxiouslovecoach.com to explore different tiers of coaching options and online programs. Thanks again for listening and catch you in the next episode. Have a blessed day.